Today, you'll learn what it takes to be healthy and happy within a stressful world from three experts walking their talk. Here is Lisa, Andrea, and Michelle. Hello, all of you amazing people. Welcome to another awesome episode of Healthy View Radio. My name is Andrea Beeman, and I'm here with my beautiful and talented, very, very talented co-hosts, Michelle fanning and Lisa Lutan. This week, we are talking about a growing epidemic, autoimmune diseases. Right. I mean, there, there are over 80 different autoimmune diseases. Some of the more common include MS, which attacks the nervous system, Addison's, which affects the adrenals, celiac in the gut, Graves and Hashimoto's. We talked a little bit about Hashimoto's last week, affecting the thyroid, uh, pernicious anemia, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, type 1 diabetes. It's crazy town out there in the world. And sometimes I'm just surprised that anybody is alive and functioning in this <laughs> world. <all. laughs> We've created, right? It's Google for Cocoa Puffs. So <laughs> according to Western medicine, the body is attacking itself by mistake. And they don't know why. But I'm going to suggest that this attack is not a mistake. But first, I want to hear from my fabulous, beautiful, and talented co-hosts. What are your thoughts on autoimmune conditions? Go well, ahead. my biggest, uh, you know, like you were saying, Andrea, it, it's not just like, oh, we don't know why the body's attacking itself. I think we could point to a lot of reasons why that could potentially be happening. And, uh, you know, we could talk about GMOs, we could talk about uh, endocrine disruptors and chemicals and toxic environment. We could talk about all these different things. But one thing that I want to suggest is that we, hmm, let's see, we see a lot of autoimmune disease in women. We see a lot in women who are overworked overstressed. Um, there's this overwhelming sense of negativity in their lives and maybe a deep seated belief that we're not okay. And that's essentially what auto, autoimmune disease is. It's the body saying I'm attacking myself. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. Boom. I love oh that. That's, that's an amazing the way. Yeah. What a great insight. <laughs> So what I'm seeing, you know, I'm in my 50s and I have a lot of friends in their 50s and 60s and family members, and I'm seeing autoimmune just going through the roof, even in people who seem like they're really healthy, which leads you to more of the toxins in the environment and that our bodies are just so confused more than ever. They're attacking themselves. And what's driving me nuts about all this is that what they have to go through to get a diagnosis. It takes years of treating these little symptoms all over their body till they finally go, oh, I see what's really going on. Yeah, that's, that's great because this is, um, autoimmune conditions is a great way to keep funding the uh, big pharma, funding the medical establishment, funding uh, a lot of stuff without actually getting to the root cause of what exactly is going on in the world, where the body would be attacking itself for some reason, right? So uh, like uh, Michelle talked about GMOs earlier. And I remember in the 1990s, in the early 1990s, they had something called a flavor saver tomato. Do you remember that? Mm -mm. Oh, oh my God. God. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> the flavor saver tomato. You guys are both going to die when I tell you this. I don't want to kill you, but here it goes. <laughs> this is like one of the first GMO experiments and um, or GM, GM, gen genetically modified experiments. And it was the splicing of the protein from a flounder into right. a tomato. And why they, yes, yes, pick up your jaw. Oh, my. <laughs> And why they did this was because tomatoes are very susceptible to cold and frost and flounder, which is at the bottom of the, the seabed is not the cold. It can handle the cold really well. And, um, uh, and when they spliced the, the gene from the flounder into the plant, they did something that was the most arrogant thing in the entire universe. They crossed species barriers, which does not happen in nature. So you want to know go wrong? Yeah, what could oh, go wrong? Man. We're crossing I mean, species, your pick. like what? everything. The island of Doctor Moreau. Remember that? <laughs> All these crazy <sighs> creatures. So here we are taking two different species that in nature would never, never combine with each other. So when you take something like that and you put that now, you have this new species that was created into the body. What is? 
And the body has to create something. It's got to create the blood. It's got to create, take down the nutrients. And that goes into the system. And the body is going, what the F <laughs> is, what the flounder is going on? <laughs> So what happened with that product? I mean, I never heard of it. So I'm hoping it was short lived. I don't know. It was on the market for quite a while. It was, they started to see a rise in inflammation in the gut with this uh, rise in ulcers uh, because the body's going to have a reaction. Like what is this thing that is not in the nature of the planet that I'm living on? Like, where did it come from? That is hilarious. Well, they were like, actually, I think what happened was they were like, this was a, this was a great success. We were able to make the tomato. Let's move on and see what else we can do. Right. Let's make all of our wheat resistant to all the pesticides. Let's see what yes. else, how else we Let's can do in our corn too. Yes. yes. Where else can we make the, the bucks? That's where all that is headed. And that is frightening. Frightened. Well, I think that, you know, we can't be that cynical. I think some of those things had good intentions. I think, oh, you know, creating food sources for the world and creating, you know, um, food that wasn't going to get ruined. I think it probably started with very genuine intentions, but it just went wrong. And now they just, it was too profitable to pull back. So yes. got to be careful. Yes, I agree. It was an experiment that went wrong and yet it's still happening. <laughs> You know, like, uh, I don't know how there's, we can't see the connection. Like, how do we get so disconnected that we can't see that this is not working? So um, uh, Michelle just said, uh, you take the, the wheat and you make it so that it, the pesticides don't affect the, the wheat, right? That mm -hmm. was one of the experiments. Mm -hmm. So then we're eating this food that is, it has this um, real serious protection on it, right? Real serious. So it's going into the body and the body's going again, what the F? What the F is this? And we, I, I think that enough with the experimentation, it did have good intentions. Lisa, like you said, they wanted to feed the world, but look what we're doing. Kill the world. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, went yeah. awry. So Andrea, it sounds like you, when you think about autoimmunity, you're thinking a lot about what we're putting into our body and how our bodies are uh, reacting with, you know, the, what we're creating in our environment and we're consuming. Uh, what about the health of our gut? Because I mean, we can't talk about immunity without talking about the good old gut. Yes. I mean, there's, you know, that's just one, you know, the GM products, that's, that's just one thing. You know, there's so many factors. Gut health. Oh my gosh. So if we are stressed because autoimmunity is on the rise, right? And if we can't digest our food, then of course, we're going to have trouble in the gut. So, uh, and is with the rest of the body. So how much stress are we under? How much stress? What's happening in our environment that we're so stressed out, we can't process our food. Every single condition that is an autoimmune condition is exacerbated by what? Stress. Stress. What affects the gut? Stress. stress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, so true because the, the, our gut, well, it goes back to the food. It goes back to everything else happening in our environment and in our emotional bodies, but our gut, our gut lining, right? We talk a lot about uh, in, uh, leaky gut. You hear that word thrown around a lot. Um, when your gut lining is not intact, there's been damage to it through all these different mechanisms. Um, there are particles going through, going from what is really the out, I think we've talked about this before, but in, from your mouth to your butt is actually outside your body. It's one yep. tube that, you know, th that's out, that's not part of uh, the inside of your body and everything that's in there needs to just go in and then go out and leave. But when uh, nutrients get absorbed through the wall, that's a good thing. But when other molecules are going through the wall of the intestinal lining, that's not a good thing. And so the more uh, that your, your immune system sees these invaders, which is really just food that you ate, maybe gluten uh, molecules going through, your immune system's like, attack, attack, we got to right. attack this. And the problem is all this damage happening inside right. our gut. You know, I want our listeners to really listen up to this because when something's not right in your body, you might go to the doctor and they might just focus on that particular issue. But I would be asking from the get-go, how is my gut health? Because so many of these issues, as we know, are starting in the gut and they're coming up in different ways in our body. And it's often the last thing that you're going to be talked about or asked about when you're going down that path. So 
if you're hearing this, think, get my gut checked early on in this process of discovery. Yeah. So when in your practice and uh, you guys, uh, what is the top AI diseases that you see? And that's, that's autoimmune, not artificial intelligence. <laughs> I'm sure that's coming though. That's coming. <laughs> killer tomatoes, killer intelligent tomatoes. <laughs> Um, for me, it's Hashimoto's hands down. I feel like every woman I talk to has Hashimoto's. Mm. You know, for me, they're, I'm not really getting that population coming to me unless they've been diagnosed by a doctor who then sends them to me to help improve their diet and their stress levels and work on it through that way. But yeah, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of MS around in my area come up. I'm seeing a scleroderma, I can't even pronounce it, scleroderma, scleroderma. Um, Hashimoto's you know, so many things that I just never really heard about in the past too much. There's just, there's, it's rampant, all this mm -hmm. autoimmune epidemic. Yeah. It's popping up everywhere. And uh, Michelle had, had alluded to something earlier about, you know, our thoughts about ourselves. So in the case of like Hashimoto's, right, this is in ancient medicine, this is our fifth chakra and it's our ability to express ourselves healthfully, happily, and with grace and wisdom. But what are women doing, and men do it too, but what are women doing that that inner voice is attacking the self in some way? I'm not good enough. I need to do more. Uh, I'm, I'm too fat. I don't look like the model on the, the, the Cosmopolitan magazine or whatever the hot magazine is. I need a facelift, right? What are we saying to ourselves where there's an internal attack? Well, literally, we are beating ourselves up. We yes. really are. You know? Really, really are. And it's happening. It's a systemic problem, right? Autoimmunity is not a disease of like the skin or the thyroid, although that's where the symptoms may show up for you. Autoimmunity is happening in, in your entire system, which is why if you have one autoimmune condition, very likely that you'll develop another. And it's just the whole system is the communication is off. Or if, if we go along with this line of thinking, the communication in our body is saying, you know, you're not okay. Destroy, destruct self. Yeah. Yes. 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 And I know Michelle is too young for this, but, uh, uh, <laughs> danger, Will Rogers, right. The, the attack attack the robot from the seventies. Yep. I remember that. <laughs> Michelle's like, what the what? <laughs> <laughs> but it yeah. is hard to even imagine our bodies attacking our, mm -hmm. ourselves, like being allergic to ourselves in a weird way mm -hmm. and getting our head around this concept. But unfortunately, based on the statistics, you know, what is it? One out of nine women is going to come down with an autoimmune disorder. So we really need to educate ourselves about this. Yeah, we need to educate ourselves. We need to get clean come clean, right? We're like these beautiful souls encapsulated in these amazing bodies that are here to keep us safe, right? Safe from the world. And, uh, and for some reason, there is an attack, an internal attack going on. Um, and uh, yes, that's correct, A-Rod. Our, our, <laughs> our guy just said, fast food doesn't help any kind of cause. <laughs> uh, Got so that right. It's the truth. So we're going to talk about autoimmune conditions today, and we're going to talk about inflammation, and we have some really great guests coming up. But today is also a very, very special day. Uh, do you girls know what today is? I do. Christmas? Almost. <laughs> <laughs> we have a new sponsor today that we, all, yay, that we all love, <laughs> and you're going to love them too. It's Mountain Rose Herbs. And for those of you that follow our show, you know that we only allow sponsors of products that we actually use ourselves uh, on the show. Like Michelle loves the Mountain Rose teas. They're absolutely fantastic. I have it right here. I'm just about to strain it into my mug. Yes, it's I'm so always good. drinking it. It's delicious. It's yes. so good. And, yes. And, you know, they, their teas are fantastic because they're synergistic so that, you know, they have um, uh, the herbs work together uh, to promote health and well-being. But I'm going to tell you why I'm over the moon about having Mountain Rose Herbs as a sponsor. And 
It's because not only do they have the highest quality, lovingly picked organic herbs and teas, they also have an entire culinary herbs and spices line of products. And I'm going to give you an example of what some of those are. Like I have a thousand of them here that I got. <laughs> I saw when I was looking, browsing through the online um, product list of what they have, I was like, what? They have long <laughs> pepper? Do oh, you they have like, all the things. All they the have everything. Long pepper? <laughs> you can't find, they got it. Yes. So do you girls know what long pepper is? No. Oh, yes. Long pepper is the original pepper that was added to turmeric and curry to make it more bioavailable. So you know how everybody's like, turmeric, turmeric, put turmeric in this, take your turmeric capsules, take your turmeric tea, take turmeric, turmeric. Um, mm. Turmeric is a fantastic anti-inflammatory spice, right? But it's not as effective until it's combined with pepper. And specifically, it was combined with long pepper initially. Oh, I thought you were supposed to combine it with black pepper. Well, long pepper. Black, black pepper. Well, well yes, it's you know, just like a different... day black pepper. I'm going to get some. You got to get some. <laughs> long pepper. <laughs> Yes. So you can eat turmeric until the cows come home, but it's just not going to be as effective until it's com combined with some type of pepper, as Michelle said. And this is the original pepper that it was combined with. And it's hard to find. And it is delicious. It is not as um, uh, harsh in the mouth as a black pepper. Like if you put black pepper in your mouth and it's got that harshness, it's soft and subtle, but it lingers on the tongue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, salt. And I noticed their teas linger too. Have you noticed that? Like when you taste it, you go through on a flavor journey with them, and I, I just I like, love that. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> well, it's so really different into than like you know. Uh, I'm not going to call out any brands, but let's just say a cheaper herbal tea out there that's like, hey, this tea tastes like raspberries, and then you taste it, and you know, you the, between the picture on the box and the smell, this artificial smell, you're like really expecting to be hit with raspberry flavor and sweetness, and then you're it's kind of a letdown. It's kind of like a one note flavor. And you're like, oh, I don't really like herbal tea. Whenever someone tells me that, I'm like, that's because you're drinking the wrong tea. Oh my God. <laughs> that's correct. Yes. So uh, we're, this is our new sponsor. We love them. Go to mountainroseherbs.com to get your long pepper and all your teas. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we got to get back to this autoimmune situation. And today we have with us Holly Bertone. She is the best selling author of the book Thriving in the Workplace with Autoimmune Disease Know Your Rights, Resolve Conflicts, and Reduce Stress. After spending 20 years as a project manager in both government and industry, she is now president and CEO of Pink Fortitude. Holly is a breast cancer and Hashimoto survivor and turned these two health challenges into a passion to help, help others. She's a certified natural health professional and a certified essential oils coach. Holly is passionate about reaching out to cancer and autoimmune survivors and also volunteers for organizations that support military veterans. She's also married to a retired Green Beret. And that could be a little stressful, I think, right? The alarm rings. He's like, I right, get out of bed, 20 push-ups. <laughs> 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 and then of course uh, so she's going to come on right after the break and then later in the show we have tessa dowell she helps women at midlife connect back to their inner wisdom so this is going to be a very exciting show don't go away we'll be right back with more healthy view radio <laughs> We're all clear Thank you. I'm going to bring Holly on now. A-Rod, do you really put duck quacks when we curse? <laughs> Say it again. Do you really put a duck quack on when we curse? Yeah. No. <laughs> really? We well, do you got to do time. it to find out. Oh, <laughs> my God. Did you put a duck on my flounder? Sure. No, it was flounder. I said flounder. <laughs> no, I said I can. I do it after. Oh, no, no. Oh. Oh, no, no, no. Hi, Holly. <laughs> Hello, can you guys hear me okay? Got about a minute. Yeah, hi, yes. hi. Hello. You're uh, you're sounding very well. Hi, I'm Michelle. I'm going to be interviewing you today. So uh, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. We're psyched to have you. Your hair is shorter yeah. than in your picture. Yes. Yeah, I got a little trim a while ago. It's bouncy. <laughs> bouncy. Good. Yeah. Well, we are streaming live to Facebook now, like in the breaks. We still stream over to Facebook and then we'll be get coming back on in a few seconds for the, the radio, the radio show. Awesome. Good stuff. We are excited, excited to talk to you about autoimmunity. You were here for the whole first segment, right? Yes. Yes. All right. Are Anything you going to get to add to that? Pepper? Yeah. 
<laughs> Andrea, I want to hear about all the other herbs you're using too. Oh my God. I, I purchased practically the whole thing, the whole store, <laughs> the whole store. <laughs> because there was so much good stuff. I was like, Oh my God, let's do this. Let's put that. Oh God. I got everything. Look, even mesquite seasoning. I got, I got Ooh. it all. Oh, you know what I, you know, you, and now for everyone who's listening to Andrea, some people might pronounce it turmeric, right? Turmeric. Yeah. Turmeric. But some people say turmeric. Yeah. Yeah. And some people so, say turmeric. A lot of people yeah. think it's T-U-R instead of T-U-M. I hear well, that regardless, lot. regardless, this is, a, <laughs> it's, it's good to take for uh, inflammation, right? So inflammation and back. autoimmunity okay. together. Now you're talking, sister. I just Here we go. say that. TRN. You're listening to Andrea Beeman, Lisa Lutan, and Michelle Fenighaus with Healthy View Radio. Do you have a question or comment for the show? Please call us right now at 1 866 472 5792. That's 1 866 472 5792. Or send us an email from our Voice America radio page. You'll find connections to reach any of the hosts there. Now, back to Healthy View Radio. Welcome back to Healthy View Radio. I'm Michelle Fenikaus here today with my co-hosts, Andrea Beeman and Lisa Lutan. And our topic is thriving with autoimmunity. And in just a moment, we're going to say hello to our guest, Holly Bertone. Holly is a number one Amazon.com best-selling author of the book, Thriving in the Workplace with Autoimmune Disease, Know Your Rights, Resolve Conflict, and Reduce Stress. She's a breast cancer and Hashimoto's survivor and has turned her health challenges into a passion to help others. Welcome to the show, Holly. Hi, everyone, and hello, ladies, and thank you so much for having me on. And Andrea, you have you you hit the nail on the head, push-ups every morning, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. How did she know? <laughs> she did her homework. Absolutely. Hey, so Holly, <laughs> before we start talking about autoimmunity, we just want to get to know you a little better. And we sure. usually we usually ask everyone what they had for breakfast today, but because we were talking about teas earlier, I was going to ask you what your favorite herbal tea is. Um, I typically drink a Tulsi green tea. There you go. Yes. See? And I'm excited. Right. I was taking notes. I'm excited to try the mountain rose tea. Oh yeah. Good, good, good. And I, had a, and I had a sweet potato for breakfast. Yum. A big sweet potato. Yeah. All right. Stick a fork in it. on it. <laughs> no, she just ate it like an apple. Right. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that's, that's what my son does. It is so strange. Okay. <laughs> Dirt and all. Yes. Dirt and all. <laughs> like raw? Oh, he doesn't eat it raw? No, no, no. no I, I, uh, I put it in the oven with cinnamon and thyme. Oh, yum. Holly, what is one thing besides eating your big sweet potato that you do every day that has the greatest impact on your life? Um, I'm going to give you two. I wake up every morning with gratitudes. And my favorite thing, especially where since we're talking about autoimmune, is I have a little mini rebounder. And I jump on that thing for one song. And I pick every day a different song, something energetic, upbeat, fun. And I jump the heck out of that thing. Gets the uh, lymphatic system going. Holly, do you have kids? I have a stepson. He is 15. Oh, okay. If I jump on a rebounder, I just pee my pants. So all righty then. I did not birth my child. So I, I... <laughs> <laughs> but I love the idea. <laughs> <laughs> I would say too much information, but we talk about poop all the time that I guess it's not. No, oh, man, that, that'll do it every I, time. I don't go me. through an interview without talking about the walking farts, so we're in good company. <laughs> <laughs> walking farts, noted. We'll hit that in a minute. <laughs> in the meantime, um, we know, you know all of us here are really into clean eating and healthy living, but what is your biggest guilty pleasure? Um, oh, goodness. Um, I make my own chocolate. So it's raw cacao with maca and matcha and a little bit of maple syrup. Oh, so much guilt. So oh, much I guilt. I know, right? Oh. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. Wait, that do you put sound. coconut butter in there too? Or uh, coconut use, oil? So I'm allergic to coconut, but I use like a, a cocoa butter. Yes. Okay. Delicious. Uh, All right. Um, so when you were diagnosed, take us back to when you were first diagnosed with autoimmune thyroiditis or Hashimoto's disease. What was the most challenging, most difficult part for you? 
Well, I was actually diagnosed one year after my breast cancer treatment had ended. So I was not getting well after treatment. I kept getting sicker and sicker and they said it was normal. And I said, no, it's not. Um, so finally we did all the tests in the world and finally came up with Hashimoto's and after cancer treatment, I, I don't want to discount Hashimoto's cause I'm going to get to that in a second. But when I was diagnosed, I'm like, okay, fine. Give me my drugs and let me go on my way. We're done. And I had no idea. Like, I was just like, whatever this thing, like I got, I got my, my drugs, we're on our way, you know, moving on with life finally. And I had no idea the truck that was about to hit me. And uh, yeah, I, I, and I hate saying this, but Hashimoto's hit a lot harder than breast cancer. Wow. wow. All right. I went through How? chemo, so that's saying a lot. Tell us more. How so? Um, just the chronic fatigue was epic. Um, a lot of diarrhea, IBS, um, a lot of uh, fibromyalgia and uh, chronic migraines. So yeah, it was, it was really bad. You, you guys were talking about the clean eating. Um, I totally cleaned up my eating, the toxins from my environment, um, and it moved the needle to about 50%. So um, there was still some underlying, um, mostly viral that we're now working on. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a journey. It's, it's been uh, six, seven years now. So. Mm, and is it an Epstein-Barr virus that you're yes. working on? Yes. Common. Yes. All right. So you got hit by a truck, then you got another truck coming down the street. And yeah, through all much. of this, you were, you were working in a yes. corporate setting? Yes. I was actually, I, we live in Alexandria, Virginia. So I was working at a federal agency in downtown Washington, D.C. And I had a management position, but then after the cancer decided I didn't want the stress and took a step down and uh, was pretty much in an analytical role. I see. I, I lived in Alexandria for four years, actually. And oh, okay. every, everyone is working in a, you know, one of those uh, government or oh, yeah. something we all very have, serious. We all, have three le- we all have a three letter agency we drive to every day. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> so what were some of the particular challenges that you faced in the workplace due to your condition? So what had happened was uh, my Hashi's was kind of on a, a decent trajectory And then um, we had some underlying causes and just basically had a health crisis. And my manager at the time wanted nothing to do with it. My manager before was very accommodating with the Hashimoto's. If you know, I had a little flare up, I could take off or stay home or whatever, no big deal. Uh, But my manager at the time wanted nothing to do it, do with it. And the basically the stress of the work environment made this the health crisis even worse. And I should have ended up in the hospital, but I was too stubborn to go. Um, but yeah, it was it was really bad um, to the point where I couldn't get out of bed. My doctor wanted me to come in for IV treatments. And um, so I actually went in, I filled out all the paperwork. I submitted what's called Family Medical Leave Act. If a company has over 50 employees um, and you have some type of medical condition or Um, something like that, you're actually entitled to apply for this Family Medical Leave Act where you can go on leave with basically without any repercussions. Um, So I applied for that, got accepted. And then uh, since, again, my manager wanted nothing to do with me not being at work, taking care of my health, she actually found a way to rescind it, which is illegal. And uh, yeah, it just got to a breaking point where I ended up resigning but not before I decided that I wanted to use that situation to help others. Wow. That must have been so awfully ter- stressful to go to. Oh, it was, I can imagine. It was horrible. And I tried to go through, um, you know, like the FMLA nurse said, oh, well, I have Hashimoto's. Why can't you just take a pill and be fine? Mm. Uh, not that simple. And, you know, and again, because I had some underlying issues, it, you know, some people can take a pill with Hashimoto's and be fine. Me, not so much. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, often I got, well, just drink more coffee or I have three kids at home. I'm tired too. Um, yeah, I mean, I fell asleep at work. I can't even tell you how many times, and I'm not talking like a little cat nap. I'm talking like manager shaking me, trying to wake me up. It was, yeah, it was, it was really bad. And I actually tried to contact the equal employment opportunity office to learn my rights about how I was being treated And they basically said, you know, you can go through the process, you can hire an attorney, but we pride ourselves on the jerk defense. So basically, we're just going to tell everyone that your manager is a jerk and they're not being discriminatory against you and your condition. All right. So, yeah. So I was like, you know what? 
we weren't ready. It was a, it was a just life altering soul crushing decision to go from a place that I had given my life for 13 years. And I was making a six figure salary, very comfortable. Um, you know, my husband and I had just a lot of tears, a lot of conversations, and we decided that it, for my health, it was best that I resigned. So we went from six figures to zero. It was really scary. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And that must be happening to uh, women and men, uh, you know, across the, across the nation, across the world. So what are some mistakes that maybe you've noticed, um, or maybe you made yourself when, um, when people are trying to talk to their boss about their autoimmune or their invisible illness, are there any mistakes you notice? Well, one thing that, and I did a lot of research uh, to, to, you know, to write the book and, and I, I pulled as many resources as I could. I just couldn't find any, you know, anything out there. So uh, one thing that I did notice was that you, if you're not, if you don't have any symptoms and you have an autoimmune disease, you don't technically have to tell your boss, but if you do decide to disclose, then they, you know, then you're legally protected. And it's always recommended that everything is documented, um, that you have your healthcare professional document everything, and that you also um, keep track of everything. So every email is documented, every conversation is documented. Always try to have witnesses, um, you know, during these conversations. But if you, but what I found out was that if you don't disclose and you do have a medical condition, condition such as autoimmune, you're protected under the Americans with Disabilities Act. And if you don't disclose and something happens that your work performance suffers because you're sick, they actually can take, um, you know, administrative action against you. Interesting. Yeah. And the, the, the ADA was actually um, amended in 2008 and then it was ratified in 2009. So endocrine and immune system falls under it. So if there was ever a doubt, autoimmune is 100% considered a disability under the Americans with Disabilities Act. So if you have an autoimmune condition and you work, you are covered. You are legally covered. Gosh, I was last week we when we were talking, I, I shared that my mother had actually spent 10 years in bed. And uh, I don't even know what she was actually diagnosed with, but I know she was out on disability from her job for a while. So there are options like that yes. available, but, but it sounds like you have to be careful about it and sometimes push for it. Yes, mm-hmm. exactly. Oh boy. So I love that someone told you to just drink more coffee because of course oh, yeah. coffee, uh, <laughs> coffee is a cross reactive that could potentially make Hashimoto's worse. Exactly. So that's terrible <laughs> advice. But what if you did that? Let's just say someone has a condition, they're falling asleep at their desk, but they just push through it and push through it um, at that same pace that they did before. Can you talk about the risk? Like what's the potential cost to someone's health? Oh my goodness. Well, I mean, I tried to do it and it was failure. I mean, I almost ended up in the hospital. I mean, I was I was to the point where, you know, systems were shutting down, organs were shutting down. They literally had me on IV treatment. So, um, to, you know, to try to bring me back. So it's just like a, that's just going nowhere. Pretty much just a a spiral, right? Like your body is saying we have officially stopped functioning and we're not going to until you start taking care of yourself. So these are the messages that we have to listen. We got to listen when the message is quiet because the message will just start getting louder from our body. Slow down, slow down. All right. Now we're going to just make you slow down. Why do we all ignore those messages? I don't know. Just because we're women and we're super women and we want to do everything. (laughs) Mm. And we want to take care of everyone. I don't know. Gosh. Well, on your website, Holly, I noticed that you offer loads of resources for yes. autoimmune disease and also for cancer. Um, yes. And some people might think of those as two very different uh, topics. Um, can you talk about why they go hand in hand? Oh, absolutely. Um, they, you know, there's so many people that actually get diagnosed with both. Um, but it's not just that. I mean, the underlying root cause in terms of, you know, you were talking about those, the the fish tomato thing. I mean, we've got these <laughs> Franken foods that we eat, everything is processed and, you know, we don't take care of ourselves. We live high stress jobs and, you know, the, this toxic soup that we live in, the underlying root cause of cancer and autoimmune are, it's very, very similar. And it all boils down to the fact that we need to take better, better care of ourselves and, you know, eat cleaner, clean up the toxic environment that we live in, reduce our stress, things like that. All wonderful tips. I mean, and they're both, um, they're both a function of the immune system going a little haywire. Yes, exactly. 
Holly, you had chemo, right? Yes, I went through chemo. Yeah, so chemo wipes out the intestinal flora. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, one of the costs, I guess. You got the pros, you got the cons. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, going back, I doubt, and especially all of the fallout afterwards, I don't think I would have, if God forbid, you know, this were to happen again, my, my, my choice would be different, but, um, but that's the decision I made at the time. And, you know, I'm, I'm still paying the consequences. Mm. So interesting. So Holly, are you working, um, privately coaching clients? Are you doing, doing mostly speaking and writing? Mostly speaking and writing. Um, I, you know, with the website pinkfortitude.com and authoring some books and then, uh, some speaking as well. So, but no, no coaching or anything like that. Andrew, you were about to ask a question before, I think. Well, she said, you know, she did those treatments, but she suffers, still suffering the consequences from those. But, I, you know, I wanted to say, yeah, but you're alive and you can live to tell that tale yes. and help so many millions of people with your story. Wow. You go, girl. Oh, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, a- I mean, and it's a journey every day. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it's you know, I've really learned it's a, the, the fortitude's there for a reason, you know, as, as part of my branding. I mean, it's just finding your fortitude every day and, you know, just making the world a better place, making yourself a better place, you know. Holly, um, we've talked about a lot of different things so far. We're talking about the autoimmune and the cancer and the workplace, but what would be your top three tips for somebody who is currently struggling to maintain their life and their job and, and their disease? Um, you know, number one is do your research. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of resources out there. Um, especially if you have an autoimmune condition, um, you can request reasonable accommodations. You can request, and you know, granted everything has to be in writing. You can request to work from home. You can request, you know, breaks, um, time to talk to your doctors on the phone, things like that. So, you know, do your research, um, you know, try to find ways to, to make that workplace more, uh, accommodable, for you so that you can take better care of your health, because if you don't take care of your health, you're the only you that you have, you know, and you have people who love you. So you have to take care of yourself, um, you know, or your health is just going to get worse. Like you were talking about earlier. It's, you know, it's, it's listening during the whisper, not during the scream. So, and, and not giving up. I mean, it's been eight years since my first diagnosis And, you know, I'm still firing doctors, finding new protocols. Like I am still out there fighting every single day to, to be better. And I know that those answers are out there. So, you know, I guess finally just don't give up. Thank you so much for being with us today, Holly. Where can our listeners go to learn more about you? Oh, sure. It's uh, pinkfortitude.com. And then you can hit the backslash and the word thank T-H-A-N-K with lots of free eBooks. Lots of free ebooks. I yes. saw them. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I was like, whoa, this woman has been busy. You wrote all of those? I love it. Yes, I love writing. Oh my gosh, you got so many resources. So it's pinkfortitude.com slash thank. Yes, the word thank, T H A N K. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you for being with us today, Holly. And we thanks are- for having me. Yeah. We're going to be back in just a second. We're bringing Tessa Dowell on to talk even more about how we can take care of you. Because what did you say? You're the only you you have. Exactly. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) We'll be back in a second. Thanks, Holly. Oh, uh, yeah. Are we all clear? Clear? So clear. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> thank you holly thank Thanks, you. holly keep up the great holly. work okay, again i'm gonna bring tessa on now there she is hey hello I don't hello see. hello wait i don't oh. i don't see her are you on the uh, the phone no, I am. Here. I can see myself. <laughs> we got you. We got you on video. <laughs> oh, there's a second page. I see. Oh, hey, oh, Tessa. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Hi, Tessa. Andrea, it's so wonderful to see you again. I hop oh, on you too. all the time. So, Tessa, sorry to interrupt the Hi. love fest here, but you're on Facebook Live right now. We'll be going back live on the air. Okay. I'll be interviewing you. I'm Lisa. And after Hi, about Lisa. eight minutes or so, of us chatting, then you'll have an opportunity to tell everybody where to find out more about you. And after that, we wrap up the show. You can stay around with us or you can 
say goodbye, whatever works for you at that point. Great. Cool. I like your yeah, setup. Look how professional. Yeah, very pretty. Yes, it is. Well, I had to really narrow it in because I actually were re renovating our basement and everything is in my office. You didn't read so, Kodak. Just seeing a little part. <laughs> Here we go. Good <laughs> You're listening to Andrea Beeman, Lisa Lutan, and Michelle Fennighaus with Healthy View Radio. Do you have a question or comment for the show? Please call us right now at 1-866-472-5792. That's 1-866-472-5792. Or send us an email from our Voice America radio page. You'll find connections to reach any of the hosts there. Now, back to Healthy View Radio. Welcome back to Healthy View Radio, everyone. We've been having a really important discussion about autoimmunity. And I think I know that I learned a lot just about autoimmunity in the workplace and what your rights are. So you really want to check that out if it's something you're dealing with. In this section of the show, we want to introduce you to an exciting up and coming talent in the health and wellness field. Our guest today, Tessa Dowell, is a holistic health coach who's passionate about teaching people to be empowered to live their best life through food choices, lifestyle choices, and mindset practices. Tessa has personal experience healing herself from a shocking cancer diagnosis when she was only 33 and knows that we can learn to go from victims in our lives to powerful creators. Tessa received her health coach certification from the Institute of Integrative Nutrition, just like all of us, <laughs> but she also successfully completed an in-depth master's healers program with some chick named Andrea Beeman <laughs> and is studying to become a certified emotional freedom technique, EFT, tapping practitioner. Tessa, welcome to the show. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much. Well, we are so excited to have you. I'm just curious, are you seeing a lot of autoimmune issues with your clients? I, I am. Um, it does seem to be everywhere. I have some very dear friends who um, have MS and the Hashimoto's, of course, is, is prevalent and um, a lot of Alzheimer's and um, not, not just older people, but even midlife people. Um, uh, just, yeah, it's, it's, it seems to be very prevalent. Um, Alzheimer's is very, very shocking. The brain diseases that are, that are happening right now. So yeah, I see it. Yeah. Lots of scary stuff happening out there. Yep. And, and speaking of scary stuff, you had a scary, a, a scary incident at a very young age. Can you tell us about your health journey and what got you here? I can, um, 33 years old, I was diagnosed with cervical cancer, and I had ignored all the warning signs, pushing, 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 working a very stressful job, 50 hours a week, um, getting very, very little recognition for all the effort I was putting into that job. And um, I actually went to the doctor because my husband and I were thinking about um, starting to have children and found out that I had very, very advanced stage cervical cancer. And so in like two weeks, I went from maybe going to start a family to having a complete hysterectomy. And so, wow, shocker. <laughs> that was a huge shock. So from that, um, oh, and to further that, they told me that it was so advanced that it was very, very likely that it had gone into the lymph nodes. And so they were going to take several lymph nodes and find out, you know, how far it had advanced. And I, at that time, I got a book called Love, Medicine and Miracles from Bernie Siegel. And I started meditating and doing visualization and seeing my body healing, um, visualizing it as I wanted it to be, not as it was. And I started these healing visualization and meditations. And when I, when they took the lymph nodes, everything was clear. They got clear margins. Everything was clear. And my husband said, you did that. Wow. You did that. That's amazing. I'm actually yeah. intrigued by one phrase that you said, yeah. I was in a job and I wasn't getting credit 
for the work I was doing. Yeah. How did that become part of your story and diagnosis? I think it was the stress of just putting so much effort into this job and feeling so isolated, not being part of a team that was, you know, grateful for the work I was doing, um, just not getting the support I needed e even further than that. I, it was the first bad evaluation I had ever gotten. So I, I was just, yeah, and after the cancer diagnosis, I just, I, I just went in and told him, I said, I, I'm, I'm done. Um, I either need to quit or I need a different position. And I moved, I did move into a, a different part-time position that happened to open up. And um, at, at that point I was on a much better place you know, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And I think when you expect better things to happen, you have those, those thoughts going out, then it reflects back. And so I was able to get into a position that was, was good for me. It was part-time. And then I started my healing journey. Wow. And how yeah. long after that, did you make that transition to studying at IIN? That was a long time. <laughs> I actually retired. I, I stayed at that corporate job um, until three years ago when I turned 55. And I took an early retirement and began the process of certifying and becoming um, just giving back, you know, wanting to share the things that I had learned that we can be empowered and proactive in our lives and we don't have to be victims and so I want to teach those tools so that people can can change their lives I love and that. that was just three years ago so um it's really? new really really new <laughs> awesome yeah. power to you and what yeah. led you to the master's healers program with Andrea oh that's a really good question how did I find Andrea well IIN first of all, of course, um, where she started. And then I, I don't know, I think I probably saw a Facebook ad or something that she was, you know, teaching. And so I started going on to her um, cooking shows. And then from from there found out about the master healers. And I'm very, very into the Chinese, you know, traditional Chinese medicine um, take on things as well. So um, it was fantastic. Andrea loved it, loved it. And oh. it really, really furthered my, my understanding and my education. And it still does because I, I keep going back and listening to those over and over and over again. <laughs> oh, so, so awesome. Yeah. And I love that you're continuing now with EFT. Can you tell yeah. us about that? Yeah. Um, one of the things that really struck me about this whole process is that stress is huge. Um, the thoughts that we think are huge and that as we go along in life, of course, you know, we, we put resistance, you know, on, on our resistance happens. Um, we go through events that cause, you know, trauma and resistance on our path. And when we get there, when, when we get to where we want to change, we sometimes know what we need to do. A lot of people know what they need to do. They know they need to exercise and they know they need to eat better, but they can't break free from that resistance. And EFT is amazing for breaking through that resistance. It's one of the fastest ways I have found that can lead you through and you, and you don't, shy away from the bad feelings. You don't shy away from these bad experiences in your life. You look at them head on, not to be a victim, not to stay there, but to crash through them and to get through the other side. And it is so empowering. And then you leave it behind and you can go forward and you're free. That's why they call it emotional freedom. It's, it's an incredible tool. I love tapping. I tap every morning. That's awesome. I just find, I think of, <laughs> what can I tap about today? <laughs> yes. And there's always, always something. There's right? always something, right? I tap because, before the show. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. It's great. Yes. So Tessa, on your website, it says, I help women in midlife reconnect to their inner wisdom and live their best life through food choices, gentle exercise, and mindset practices. Mm -hmm. So I'm a woman in midlife, and I would <laughs> love for you to tell me a few tips to feeling my best. 
Well, one of the tools I have when you sign up for my newsletter um, is called the Emotional Ladder. And I know you're not going to be able to see it very well, but I'll hold it up anyways. Um, and so it's really, really a simple tool. And it's based on the teachings of Abraham Hicks. I don't know if any of you know that. That's a law of attraction, um, wisdom teachings. And basically, this is a guide to help you reach for higher vibrational and better feeling emotions. And so sometimes I think we, you know, we come to wanting to change and we try to cross this chasm and go too far and we get really frustrated. This is a way to just reach for the next better thought or feeling. And it has a lot of the emotions on, on the ladder. So you go from the bottom and if you're feeling in a state of, you know, insecurity, guilt, and unworthiness, and who of us are not in that place a lot, especially as women, right? Then we can say, okay, what's, what's something higher up on the list? And believe it or not, even anger is better than feeling unworthy and powerless. And so this kind of gives you a little bit of a guide for reaching for your next next best thought and it's also a really good consciousness tool so that we can be aware and start to go inside and see where we are getting stuck you know and reaching for the next higher vibrational thought that we can because they do I'm a I'm a very much a student of the law of attraction and I believe that we are vibrational beings and that our thoughts go out into the world and create the reality that we're going to live tomorrow. So our thoughts are really important and our emotions are a guide to what's happening with our thoughts. And so it's really important to be aware of the emotions. And totally. all the and all the emotions are fine. There's nothing wrong with them. And so you want to be okay with wherever you at, you're at. It's, it's a, so true, Tessa. And I want everyone else to know where you're at. So why don't you give them your website and how they can okay. reach out to you? Great. Um, it's beingbeautifullybalanced.com. And um, on there is, you know, you can sign up for um, a consultation. And um, right now, while I'm in my EFT um process getting certified I'm almost there and I just have one test to go um, so you can take advantage of that because I'm offering EFT sessions for like 20 bucks um, mm -hmm. you you can't do EFT sessions with the <laughs> practitioner for 20 bucks so um, so I'm offering that until I actually take my final test and then I'll probably be readjusting things at that time um, but also if you sign up for the newsletter then I'll send you this emotional ladder tool which is very simple but very powerful and um, I would love to start the conversation. That's where it all starts. We start with a conversation about where you're at and then go from there. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you're a you. wealth of information and a pleasure. So it's been our treat having you today as well. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. So you guys, quick takeaways on today's show on autoimmunity and all these other good things. Well, uh, I noticed that Holly, when we asked her what she does every day, she said she wakes up and does her affirmations. And that to me is uh, getting right at the heart of this topic of autoimmunity, right? So if there's a, remember the, the ant in the attic, when we talked to Janine Roth about her book, she talks about the ant in the attic is always beaten down on you. That's the voice um, that can, I don't want to say cause autoimmunity, but I'm going to say it. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> so affirmations are the opposites where we tell ourselves something believable uh, and positive. You know, I did this really great today. Boy, I really shine today. You know, boy, Michelle, great job on Healthy View Radio today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Awesome job, Michelle. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So my takeaways, you know, like I, I like what Tessa said. She said we can be proactive, not victims. And, uh, you know, if you're feeling like a victim, get angry, go up the ladder, go to her website, you know, get the information that you need. It's only 20 bucks, right? To get started, to get started. And then look at Holly. Holly said, you know, she firing doctors. So she's got some of that anger going on too. She's not just sitting idle saying, I'm sick. My life is over. That's it. It's done. Uh, you know, being proactive, really getting in there and taking charge taking charge and feeling that love for the self i think it's so important yeah i thought it was super interesting that all three of us and both of our guests today really were in jobs at one point that 
caused us to get into a very unhealthy state and have very bad outcomes as a result. And I know so many other women out there as well. So if you're listening to this, please start listening to your body and start taking care of yourself now so you don't have to pay the price later. Because as you can see, the price can be pretty high to pay. So I want to thank all of you for joining us today. I do want to share a really lovely review that I just read on iTunes. There is no name, but it says, I love Healthy View Radio. It's one of my favorite things to tune into each week. I always leave with awesome information that inspires new ways on how to be the healthiest, happiest version of myself. Who doesn't want that? Exactly. Who doesn't want that? We would be very appreciative if you could write a review. Just go to healthyviewradio.com slash review. And we will be back next week with lots of great content as well. Take care. Wait, don't we have a winner of something? I thought that was, oh, oops. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That was oh, there. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We're still on Facebook. Do you want to announce it now? Yeah, let's announce it. Okay, sorry, that was up top. I thought that was up there. Okay, we have a winner for our Vapor Organic Giveaway. It's Ainsley Wantanabe. And we will be contacting you, Ainsley, and congrats on winning your Vapor Organic Giveaway. There we go. That's it. <laughs> Thanks.